Hey there, my name is Robert Jurdy, and today we're at the Robotics and Automation Engineering Labs here at Southwest Research Institute. Now, today we're going to be talking about an open source software project called Ross Industrial. Now, my guides for the day are going to be two engineers, Jorge Nicho and Cristina Gomez. Now, they've set up a demonstration for us, so let's go check it out. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi. Hi, I'm Robert Jurdy. Jorge Nietzsche, nice to meet you. Jorge, good to meet you. Hi, Christine Gomez. Christina, good to meet you. Well, thanks for having me here, guys. Um, now, I've heard about Ross before, but talk to me a little bit about Ross Industrial. Well, so Ross Industrial builds on Ross, and it allows you to interoperate between industrial robots, sensors, communication buses, and other kinds of automation tools. Okay. So essentially, Ross Industrial allows you to leverage the computational tools in Ross and apply it to industrial problems with the reliability and code quality that industry expects. All right. So now I know that Ross is an open source project. Is Ross Industrial open source as well? Yes, Ross Industrial is also open source under the BSD license, and so it's free and available to anyone who has a computer and the internet. All right, cool. So if you have a robot arm in your garage, you can hook it up and use it, huh? That's right. Very fun. You know, I've always wanted a robot arm. You think it would fit one of these on me? Huh? Might be a little big. Maybe yeah. a little big? <laughs> Maybe you're right. So talk to me how uh, you use Ross Industrial to create this demonstration. Sure, check this out. So. It all starts by creating a three-dimensional environment that has the robot and all the obstacles in its environment. So then what we do is we create these configuration files that essentially tell the robot how to navigate to its environment without colliding into obstacles. And then we uh, generate these uh, launch files which essentially link up all the library modules that in fact control the robot. And since Christina built a three-dimensional model, I'd like to explain to her how that's done. Okay, so essentially you're saying that you, you're telling the, the robot arm its environment so it knows where to move around. Yes, that's exactly it. All right. Hey, Christina, how's it going? Hey, good. Good. So let's talk about this really cool 3D environmental stuff. Right, so the best way to understand what's going on in your software when you're programming it is to have a 3D visual environment of the same project as well. And then the last thing you see here is the real uh, live streaming data from our sensor, which in this case is a camera. So if you put your hand in front of it, you could see it live. Okay, let's see. Hey, oh, look at that. That's really cool. So what exactly makes this industrial? Well, the industrial part is the libraries that we're compiling in our ROS repository to interact with all of these robots that are made by industrial manufacturers. The major components in these libraries is the URDFs, which is a universal robot description file. Okay. And we can make these for each individual robot as well. Okay, so you don't have to make one of these URDFs from scratch, essentially. That's right. Huh, okay. And so cool. we have those in the library, but if you had to make one from scratch, we could do that and it's not too difficult either. All right. And I can show you how to do that in the other room. Let's go. Hey, Christina, how's it going? Hey, good. Good. So now we're in a Windows machine, right? That's right. We're on Windows, so we can run SolidWorks. Because uh, what we have here is the model of the robot that we have out there, yeah. so you recognize it. We can now go straight from SolidWorks to a URDF file. OK. Uh, with a wizard that was created by one of the uh, ROS developers. So it's like doing a lot of the work for you. Yes, exactly. All right. And it works even with the customized end effectors. So now what is an end effector? That's just the, the hand part of the robot. Ah, see, science, man. I'm learning stuff all the time, right? Awesome. And well, Jorge will show you, once we have the URDF file, where to go from there. OK, so Jorge. Jorge! So what's next? So once we have a three-dimensional model of the robot in its environment, we can actually define additional things with this tool in ROS. Okay. For instance, if we would like to prevent the robot gripper to collide with the table, then we would certainly like to tell the robot, you don't want to do that. That's right? probably never a good thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> and in addition to that, we can indicate other things, such as tell the robot what its components are, like these links. Okay. And also the table and what's on the table itself. So what are the processing differences between ROS and like ROS Industrial? Well, the process for creating a project in ROS Industrial is essentially the same as that in ROS. However, uh, what ROS Industrial has is it provides the drivers that encode data and turn them into information that's encoded in the robot's native language. Okay. So how do you pick the drivers? The drivers are provided in packages that have the same name as the robot. Uh -huh. um, 
However, the interface for these drivers is essentially the same, regardless of the robot's make and model. Interesting, okay. So, and let me show you how we yeah. do this. So now I need to uh, call in my launch files in order okay. to get a robot to move. So what, what a launch file is essentially is a script that brings in all the different ROS nodes, such as the drivers and other programs, so that the robot can actually move and navigate to its environment. Okay, so essentially the launch files communicate with everything to get the robot arm moving. Yes. Okay. How many launch files are there? Usually that's application specific. In this particular case, we have four different launch files, but in reality, we could have just one launch file that starts all the nodes and gets the robot to move. All right. Well, let's get this robot moving. Sure. All right. So Ross Industrial is free? That's right. So I can just download it and start using it? Yep. Any computer that has Ubuntu and Ross Forte installed, you can just do a sudo apt get install Ross Forte Industrial Desktop and you're done. I don't know what that means, but it seems pretty straightforward. Well, 10 <laughs> words later and you're in. There you go, right? <laughs> so what if I want to use Ross Industrial for an application that's never been used before? There are a number of ways you can introduce new capability to the Ross repository. First, you can write your own node, package it, and upload it into the repository. And since Ross Industrial is under the BSD license, you're allowed to use any part of it in any proprietary software while keeping all the copyrights to yourself. Now, I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. <laughs> so let me ask, is there someone here who could help me with that? Of course, if there's anyone in need of technical assistance for Ross Industrial, they can contact Southwest Research, and we can either provide technical guidance or directly support your project and there is also the Ross Industrial Consortium. Um, and if you happen to be a member, you can submit your application as a focused technical project and pull in your resources to get other members to help you find a solution for it. Perfect, there you go. Well, I want to thank you guys. You all have been wonderful hosts today and for thanks for showing me around. Hori, sure. I appreciate it. Christina, thank you all so much. How about a big high five for science? Yeah! High five for science, robot? No? Okay, fine. Well, my name is Robert Jurdy, and thank you all so much for watching.